Oh, hi friends. Welcome to my not a sewing vlog. My name is Emily and I am very warm. It, uh, it suddenly became summer here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we went from, oh, the fifties pretty much to the eighties overnight. Um, we went from cold, rainy, early spring to like midsummer overnight. Um, and, uh, homes in the, uh, Pacific Northwest don't tend to have AC, at least older homes, newer homes are smart enough to be putting AC into them now. But um, older homes, meaning anything within the last probably 20 years, which is the majority of places to live, um, unless AC was put in um, after, like recently, it's not gonna have AC. And my little townhouse does not have AC. Now, in past, in the past, um, you could usually get away without AC in the Pacific Northwest, um, because summers tended to be pretty mild, but <laughs> it's probably global warming. <laughs> um, we have had some pretty hot summers, including, uh, the past two summers, it got into the hundreds and, um, caused some major issues because people didn't have AC and, uh, to the point where they were opening up schools and churches and telling people, Hey, come here to stay cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, now you can sometimes get away with having like your windows open and fans. Um, we, have often been able to create kind of a wind tunnel situation in our upstairs by putting a fan in like our bedroom pointed toward in towards the room in the open window and then through the hall across the other side of the upstairs is handsome hubby's office and um, with his window open we have a fan pointed outside and it basically just like draws air through our upstairs, which creates this kind of wind tunnel, which can keep it kind of cool. At least it keeps the breeze moving and makes it bearable. Um, unfortunately, our downstairs only has one window with a screen on it, which is our front window, which faces a walkway, which everyone else in our townhouse grouping has to walk past to get to their townhouse. Um, so I like to keep those blinds like just barely cracked open during the day. Cause otherwise they can see my super messy kitchen. And, um, I always get really nervous about having that window open because I say some rather ridiculous things to absolutely no one during the day. And also to my husband, when he's here and, and to my dog and to my friends, I say absolutely ridiculous things at all times and all things, all places, all people. Um, so I get a little nervous about that cause I often forget that that window's open, which I just remembered that it is open right now. I'm fine. It's fine. It's cool. It's cool. Um, we have talked about, there's a window behind me. I don't know if you ever noticed that. This is a window. Um, I keep planning on doing things with this window, like window treatment, like putting fancy stuff to make it pretty. And it never happens um, because we are plagued with, I tell you, ever since we moved here, um, in 2019, it is like hubby gets a job, hubby loses job, hubby gets a job, hubby loses job, hubby gets a job, hubby finds better job, leaves that job. Then that job says, Oh, your contract is over 
or we're ending that contract early. Hubby loses job. Now hubby got a new job and just started it. Um, and just so you know, I am not a housewife. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. And not that I wouldn't mind being like a stay at home puppy mom. That's kind of the dream, isn't it? I'd love a bunch of puppies and to be a stay at home puppy mom. But, um, I really do want to work actually. Um, during, uh, the first year we were here, um, he had a really good job that managed us financially. And he said, Hey, you've always wanted to go back to school like full time and get your, uh, bachelor's degree. At the time for the past few years, I'd been chipping away like one to two classes at a time online, which was going to take me forever, like 15 years to, uh, finish that bachelor's degree. And before that, I'd been trying to get my bachelor's degree since like I started college back when I was 18, back in, in the before times. We won't talk about how long ago that was. Anyway, um, that was a long time. I'm really uncomfortable. That was a really long time ago. Uh -huh. Um, it's really warm. I'm sorry. My brain's. Oh, that's another reason why I'm like, Bleh. it's my girl time. Yep. That's right. My body, which refuses to, uh, keep babies in it, um, likes to taunt me every month by saying, Oh, but we're going to build you a little nest for that baby. We won't let you keep. And then we're going to punish you and, and, and force that nest out of your body in the most dramatic, horrible way. So I have had an ongoing, like migraine since I woke up this morning, will not go away. It is sitting right here, right here above the side, right here. Oh, will not go away. Have I taken, uh, uh, extra strength ibuprofen for it? Yes. Or, uh, Excedrin, not ibuprofen, Excedrin for it. That usually works on migraines? Yes. Have I taken, um, cramp pills for my cramps? Yes. Have I drinking my, uh, Coke Zero with, uh, my little touch of lime in it? Um, to try and help all the things too. Yes. Did, um, it help any of those things? No. Sorry, I'm being very dramatic, but I have the right to be because it is my time of the month. Um, I was talking about something. Oh, school. I, you've heard this story already, but we're friends and friends don't care if they've heard a story already. Well, they do. They, but they roll their eyes in their head and then say, no, go on. No, no, it's fine. I don't think I remember. You're my friend, right? That's what you're saying, right? Anyway, um, so my sweet husband said, you know, my job's covering things. Why don't you go ahead and just hop into your full-time school or into your online schooling full-time? And I was like, that would be amazing because we were both doing school online, but I was further ahead than him. So I hopped into online school full time and we agreed I'd do it for a year full time to just kind of get a good jump ahead in my schooling. And then in a year, in April of 2020, I would go back to part-time schooling and get a job. And I, I thought that was great because that also gave me a chance to like set up our apartment when we got here and kind of learn the area and make some awesome new friends, which I totally did. And just kind of, you know, just kind of make uh, Washington State our home and this area our home. And that was really good and really important to me to like get the opportunity to kind of bond with our home. And, uh, you know, and also like I took care of the house and stuff too. I mean, we kind of split things, but I also kind of did that too, because, you know, he's kind of a typical guy, handsome hubby. We're like, unless you like 
point him directly in front of that thing you want him to do, the thing you want him to do just doesn't exist. You know, like, um, like a laundry or dishes or like dirtiness or like that sock that's been on the floor for like ever that you refuse to put in the dirty clothes because it's his and you know he's got to notice it someday and put it away. Right? Like he will. Right? No. I'm telling you right now, they never will. Anyway, um, so year passes. It's March of 2020. Um, I'm super excited because my birthday is coming up. I'm finally going to get to go to the Victorian Festival. I know you've heard enough about that. I'm not going into that. I'm just saying it was going to be my first time going. Had everything planned. Had made costumes. So excited. Early March 2020, start hearing about this thing that's going around. People are getting sick. I'm like, oh, that's... That sounds like a problem. Hmm. I start kind of preliminary job hunting because, you know, my semester is going to be up in a, be in a little over a month. And, you know, and that's when I'm going to start a new job. And by my birthday, everything is shut down. Everything is shut down. And my doctor is telling me, hey, if you get COVID because you're high risk, I'm not going to go into why I'm high risk, but I have some medical issues and stuff. You're high risk. Um, you will die. Thanks, doctor. Anyway, um, I'm like, what do I do? I, I'm terrified to like go to work. And handsome hus hubby being handsome hubby said, stay home. Keep doing school. Finish school. So that's what I did. And I graduated last July, uh, July, 2022. I graduated. It was the most surreal experience ever, which I know I've talked about. So I'm not going into it anymore. I just realized today that it's May. It's May. Do you know that it is May? That means that I have been trying to find a full-time job for almost a whole year. I, I thought, and I, I'm pretty sure everyone who graduates from college kind of has the same thought process. You think, oh my goodness, all this time and money and stress and telling your friends, no, I can't go. I can't do that. I have homework and planning your life around schooling and just all of that, all of that, just life of school will be worth it. Because you will graduate and the doors to jobs that you want will just open up. They'll be like, oh, look at you. You have a degree. What would you like to do? Let's give you a job. <sighs> no. Apparently, uh, because I have worked so much before, I'm overqualified for a bunch of jobs since I worked a bunch before in uh, medical insurance and uh, now have a degree. And then the jobs that I want, look at my almost four years of not working and say, oh, she wasn't working. That's not good. Oh, this person over here who applied and has the same credentials as her, they've been working this whole time. So we're going to go with them. So I'm like, you know, I'm like in this hole. I'm in this, this job hunting hole. And I feel like all I really need is like one person to hire me, just someone to hire me. And I know people always say, well, call centers will hire you and, and McDonald's will probably hire you. And, but Well, I mean, I could say all my excuses, but my main excuse is probably a little bit of pride. I did all those jobs years ago. I did all those jobs. I, I put up with them. I hated them. 
I put in my time doing those jobs. I shouldn't have to go back. But it's kind of looking like that's what's going to have to happen for me. Because I think that if I can get a job, any job, get some work, any work, um, so I can put on my resume, hey, I'm working. Look, I'm working. I'm not some, like, person who isn't working, who hasn't been working. I mean, even on my uh, resume and my cover letter letters, I made sure to point out during this gap, I was a full-time student finishing up my degree. And, you know, anyone with half a brain would notice, hey, that's also during the time COVID was happening. But, uh, I think I'm hireable. I mean, I'm personable. I have some skills. <sighs> this video is basically a rant about not having a job, but it's kind of been at the forefront of my brain lately because, as I said, Handsome Hubby started a new job this week. Yay, handsome hubby. Um, it's not quite what we were hoping for, but it meets all of his requirements for a, um, for a internship. For some reason, with his degree, you have to have an internship your final semester. But if you are like a working adult, you really don't have time to like do an internship and get a job. So something you could do is if you found a job that met a bunch of requirements and was willing to like fill out paperwork and stuff saying, yeah, this, you know, we're willing to call this an internship, like a paid internship for X amount of time. Um, it could double as that too. And, uh, so that's what we really needed because this is it for him. And then he's done. And then school will no longer rule our lives. We no longer have to plan our lives around due dates and semester breaks. And it's just done. <sighs> Being adults in school is the worst. I know I've said this before, but I just need to say it again. It's the worst. If I could give the the teenagers coming out of high school, any advice at all is if college is your thing and you want to go to college, do it now. Even if you're like, ugh, when you get there and you're like, this is the worst. I'm going to go part time because it's too much for me or blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Make it work. There's so much life. There's so much life to, to, to do all the other things. There's so much time push through, get your schooling done ASAP because when you're in your early twenties, oh my gosh, you can stay up all night long and go to classes the next day and still retain everything and not even be tired and, and just amazing things. When you're older, school is not, the school's horrible. Okay. This was a super long rant that apparently lasted almost 20 minutes long. I am sorry. Um, Part of it is because, you know, my brain is like not working right now. Um, but also I have spent like a week and a half trying to make a video about chatelaines, Victorian chatelaines and trying to like insert cute pictures and stuff. And I looked at like other people's, uh, YouTube videos and how they make them and then tried to figure out how to do stuff. And you know what I discovered? I can't do it. I don't know how. I can make a PowerPoint, but I don't want to make a PowerPoint. I want to make a vlog. I want to make a YouTube video. I want to do the thing. Wow, my shirt is way too big. I need to take this in. Look how poofy it is. That's like, it's for a much more well-endowed woman. But if I like hold that in, you know, see how much cuter. Yeah. 
Did you see my shirt? It has butterflies on it. Can you see my butterflies? I love butterflies. Okay. Um, but what I am going to show you is my satellite. And I'm going to put the link where I got the stuff. Um, everything was gotten from um, a Etsy store, possibly two. I think it's called Raz, Raz, Razzleberry Studios or something like that. I'm going to put the links in my um, description. Um, but I really wanted Chatelings for the Victorian Festival because I thought it would be a really nice touch when I went down the in the uh, down the aisle in the fashion show and um, and I've always kind of wanted one now antique ones are amazing and I I highly suggest googling antique you know chatelings they're beautiful and can be so ornate and they have the coolest little attachments to them. They are also very expensive. So I'm all for getting a rem like a, you know, one that someone's made in the style of Victorian chatelings. So the first part of a chateling, let's see if you can see, there we go, is kind of the top decorative holder part. Now this part up here is going to have some kind of a hook. So this one has this attached to it. And what this does is it slips onto the waistband of your skirt or belt. Um, they could also have like a big pin attached to them to pin to your waist. And that's actually what I did is I slipped a big, I, one of those nice big safety pins through this and then pinned it to the waist because I wore a tea gown that doesn't have like a, a waistband. Um, it's just one solid smooth uh, line in the dress. So I pinned it to the side um, to wear the chatelaine. And then chatelaines uh, usually, so chatelaines, there's a distinction. There's chatelaines for the home, and then there's a chatelaine hook for uh, for your purse. There's two different ones. And, and here's something not a lot of people seem to understand, because uh, sometimes when you walk around at, like, Victorian events and, and everything, you will see ladies with chatelaines attached to their waist with all the little attachments and stuff, and you're like... I'm always like, oh, it is beautiful. It's so cool. But you would not wear that outside of your home. Chatelaines were meant to be your useful, to be useful um, when you are at home. Um, a housekeeper would maybe have a chatelaine that would have keys attached to her hooks. Um, a lady of the house, such as myself, when I had attached my tea gown, which is only worn at home, I have attached to mine, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, dear. Um, I got a little tangled up. No, no, okay, it's fine, everything's fine. Um, so I have a handkerchief hook that holds an embroidered handkerchief, and it's just this lovely little hook right there. Um, I have a, they're called spy glasses, but it's, it's really just a, like a reading glass so that you can read the fine print because oftentimes in newspapers and books and, and uh, for example, Regency era, Lady Whistledown, you know, it's going to be fine print uh, that might be hard to read. So that's what that's for. Um, in the center. Okay. So we have a few things missing. Uh, oh, that was a little notebook. 
I need to search my bag to find it. It's a little notepad that was attached to this hook. Um, and these hooks, by the way, that are commonly used by people who are creating these uh, interpretations of Victorian chatelaines are actually watch hooks. So they, uh, they are for attaching pocket watches and they work perfect for chatelaine attachments. Um, so for this one, uh, in the era, Victorian era, it would be a little pencil with an ornate case. Uh, this is actually a pen that doubles as a stylus, which I thought was very clever that had been kind of decorated. And then this little thing is um, supposed to carry a picture of handsome hubby in it, but um, I have lost the little picture I was going to put in it. So anyway, so you have the top part, the chains, the hooks, and then your attachments. And so for a lady at the house that, you know, is going to be probably spending her day in her sitting room, uh, reading, doing embroidery, um, having tea, perhaps entertaining some friends that might drop by some colors. These are all you would need for the day. Someone like a housekeeper or a lady's maid might need something different, such as uh, keys, a little sewing kit, um, the notepad and the pencil would be perfect for a housekeeper as well because they would need to take notes as they find things around the house that they need to be reminded needs doing or fixed or um, the maids need updated, that kind of thing. Um, now, as I said, all of those are to be worn in the home. They were never meant to leave the home. You would never wear your chatelaine with all of that stuff outside of the home. If you're taking any of that stuff with you, like your handkerchief. Now, a lady's handkerchief was often not kept in her purse. It was often tucked into her sleeve or her glove because, again, women covered themselves to their wrists during the day. And this is basically until... I don't know, 1920s, I think, uh, before this changed. So it's been going on for a really long time, people. Um, and so you would often tuck your handkerchief there. So it was very easily within reach, not in your decolletage, because remember during the day, your decolletage is not showing. You are covered up to your neck during the day. So it would be just tucked in there. But if you wanted to take like your seeing eyeglass or a little notebook for some reason, or your calling card case, that would be in your little reticule, your little bag that you would take with you. And the, what you would need then is something like this. Now I bought this online and it was claimed it was a, was vintage. I don't know. The price was good. It, it might be vintage. Uh, I don't know. It's got a bit of a patina kind of on it. Um, so I don't really know. I don't really know. But again, the price was good and it was perfect for my needs. But so this is the type of chatelaine for a purse. Again, it's got a beautiful decorative design. You'll notice there are no chains hanging down from it. And that's because a lady outside with, with the chains dangling and everything, they could easily get broken off or lost. So you didn't want that. I had to stop my video, start a new one, because as we all know, once you hit about 30 minutes, my phone likes to shut off. So on the back, there are two hooks. There is this big one. This big hook is what you slide on to your, uh, the waist of your skirt, or it would have a big pin, or you could slip a big pin through this 
to pin to the waist of your skirt. Now, pockets are still incredibly, uh, are, are a rare, almost non-existent thing. So this is what the ladies would use. You'd slip that onto your skirt. Then, I don't know if you can see, there is a smaller hook down here. It's not super wide, smaller hook. And that's where you'd hang your reticule from. So whether your reticule has like a chain or a fabric or ribbons or whatever, that is the drawstrings or the however it's held. Um, I don't have mine with me handy, but I do have this ridiculous thing I see over here. So you would put it through that hook right there. This is a little bag hanger footy thing that you use in airplanes. I don't know. It's just hanging here until it finds a home. Um, but if you pretend it's a Victorian reticule bag, so you'd hang it on that little hook and then you'd slip this onto your waist and it would just keep your bag right there at your waist within easy reach. Um, and that's what your chatelaine would be. Um, not the big one with the chains that you wear around the house. It would be just a simple clip that would hold your bag. Um, there are also some, some belts that were, where did, where did I get this from? Oh, right from this place over here where it does not go, but that's where it is. Um, there were also some belts that were created specially with those types of uh, chatelaine hooks built onto them. Uh, usually decorative kind of metal belts with filigree on them. And then there would be a little place with a decorative like hook coming down or maybe a little chain thing with a hook to uh, hang your purse from, your reticule from. Um, and that would be your outside the home chatelaine. Now, if you were going to an evening event, like a ball or a, uh, or a dinner, you didn't wear a chatelaine hook at all. Um, they usually had a special table where the ladies could put their bags down. Um, and you'd usually just carry your, your fan would be on a, like a string. Where did I put my fan? Oh, cause I need it. It's a millzillion degrees. Um, your fan would be on like a little sh uh, ribbon and it would hang from your wrist. And, uh, other than your fan and maybe your dance card hanging from your wrist, that is all that you would have on you at those events. They would have a little table next to you like a, a women's special area set up for the women, um, where women could relieve themselves, you know, probably full of chamber pots and whatnot, um, in the early Victorian era. And then in the later era, probably special bathrooms for women. Um, but also it would be set up with soft little chaise lounges and, um, mirrors everywhere. And, you know, um, cool cloths to, to cool yourself off with and, um, just kind of a, an area for women to, um, refresh themselves. And, uh, the table for your, your little bags, your purses would be right there. So you could grab yours, go inside and fix whatever you need to fix or, um, pull your calling card out write a secret little note to someone and slip it into your, um, slip it into your glove or into your decolletage to, you know, pull out and secretly hand to that gentleman over there who's been giving you the eyes. Um, so this is my brief little history of the shadowing. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think. Not a whole lot new 
on the costuming front. Um, my costumes at this point are, I am getting costumes. I'm making some fixes on my green dress for an event coming up. I am working on a Regency day dress and possibly revamping, though if it refuses to revamp, I'll have to make a whole new Regency ball gown for a Regency event. Um, and then my um, Baroque uh, pastoral shepherdess outfit based on my based on my Mattel Barbie that is based on an 18th century shepherdess uh, pastoral painting. Um, I also have a huge list of, I had a, I had a huge list of sewing for costume college. And then I realized with everything I'm making, a lot of this could be used for costume college. So I actually cut down my costume college sewing to two things. I know it's amazing. It's still a lot of sewing though, since I only have like two and a half months and I'm a notoriously slow sewer. Um, but that's okay. I can do it. I can do anything if I actually like put my mind to it. Um, I'll admit I'm kind of hoping that I get a job instead and I'm not able to finish anything and just wing it because um, I'd much rather have a job than get be able to get a ton of sewing done. Sorry, but there it is. Um, anything else of note? Not really. Oh, one last thing. Um, a few videos ago, super, super, two completely different people. I thought maybe it was like the same person from like two different accounts. And so I kind of looked them up to see, and that was not the case. Um, mentioned my hair, which you are very nice and very kind to, um, mention my hair. Um, they just talked about, they, they said it was, looked like it was in very nice condition and very shiny and pretty. And I really appreciate that. And asked if I had any, um, tips or advice for like how I make my hair shiny and pretty. And if I had to give one piece of advice to anyone, this is the best piece of advice. Do not towel dry your hair. Um, it, it was a piece of advice given to me by an old friend and, um, and she sent me an article about it, about what towel drying does like does to your hair. And so, um, you know, when people towel dry and they rub at their hair, it is not good for your hair. It's part of what makes your hair dull and frizzy. Do not towel dry your hair. Um, here's what I suggest. When you get out of your shower or bath or whatever, when you're done washing your hair, um, take, take your towel and just scrunch your hair to get like the major sections of water out of your hair. Scrunch your hair. Okay, just scrunch it. Don't rub, don't rub, don't, don't put your hair up in the towel, nothing. Just scrunch your hair. Then, um, when you're done with that, uh, if there's any treatments you like to do to your hair. So for me, I like to spray detangler in and comb through my hair with a wide tuned, uh, wide toothed comb. Um, when that's done, if you have any pre treatments like that, you like to do, um, then flip your head over and put a towel or not a towel, sorry. put a t-shirt on your hair, twist it up like you would a towel and flip it up. This is now, this is if you have time to kind of air dry your hair, or if you are planning to sleep in wet hair. Sleep in your t-shirt turban on your head or walk around your house with your t-shirt turban on your head. Not a towel, 
a t-shirt. Trust me, your the condition of your hair, you will notice that it is in so much better condition within just a few times of doing this. Now, I'm going to do a quick uh, a quick thing tutorial. Ah. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Okay. So, I got my t-shirt. Um, this is for my 10 year anniversary. Um, I don't actually wear t-shirts anymore, but on 10 year anniversary, I wanted handsome hubby to know that I loved him very much. So I had t-shirts made that I knew he would appreciate because he's a big time gamer. So here's what you're going to do. And you can do it with the t-shirt right side out or inside out. It doesn't really matter because t-shirt material is just the same through and through. So you're going to flip your hair upside down. You're going to put the t-shirt over your hair. You're going to fold it underneath. And then you're going to twist it like you do if you've ever done this with a towel. And then you can kind of tuck it in the back to make it stay. And there you go. You got your t-shirt turban. And then you can just walk around like this until you're ready to dry your hair. You can walk around like this until your hair is dry. It won't, it won't dry all the way like this. I'll just warn you. But if you don't want sopping wet hair while you walk around to do stuff for a while, leave this on for about an hour, take it off and your hair will be just nicely damp. And then you can let it air dry or you can sleep in it like this. It might kind of come undone during the night. Not a big deal. If you don't want it to come undone during the night, um, you can like stick a bobby pin, like bobby pins in the back here, or you can like, Oh, I lost my earring somewhere. Anyway, or you can clip it or you, you know, you can find some way to make it stay. If you sleep in it like this, you might have some nice soft waves in the morning. Um, so That is my hair recommendation for making your hair soft and shiny. Um, stop towel drying t-shirt, t-shirt, t-shirt. Um, I also do not use a hair dryer unless absolutely necessary. Unless like I have been like, unless for some reason I put it off to last minute or if I'm like on a trip, and I need to, otherwise I like shower the night before and sleep on my wet hair to let it dry naturally during the night. Because I mean, I use curlers, um, like hot curlers. Sometimes I use curling irons sometimes, but hair dryers, like, Ooh, hair dryers. They're just, they're just bad news for your hair. They just, they're so bad for your hair. I mean, the other things are bad for your hair too, but hair dryers are just, you're just, they're just drying your hair. You're, you're like damaging your hair to dry it when you can dry it naturally. So I recommend natural air drying people. Um, so this is very, very warm me signing off. Um, hopefully some fun new stuff on my next video and um thanks uh for being you let me know what you're working on because i love your stuff i love your face i love your things tell me all the things okay bye